Hello, my name is Joel Fearham. I'm a land steward with Geauga Park District, and today we're going to teach you a little bit about an invasive plant that may be in your yard and is also in some of our parks. We're here today at Orchard Hills Park in Chesterland, and we're going to tell you a little bit about Lesser Celandine. Lesser Celandine is a non-native invasive plant, and it was brought over from Europe and Asia as an ornamental. It was planted, but it soon escaped into our natural areas and is now a problem for us. It's concerned because it's out right now, as well as our uh, native ephemeral wildflowers, and it competes with those. A uh, little bit about this plant. It grows about three to five inches high, so it's pretty short. It gets these nice yellow flowers on it. It's in the buttercup family, so you can kind of see a resemblance there. The leaves are heart-shaped, uh, kind of a, a, a shiny green color. Sometimes they get a little watermark almost on them as well. Now this plant, you'll find it out uh, maybe the end of March through early part of May. And then it's gone, it dies back the rest of the year. Now this plant does produce seeds. But one of the main ways that it spreads uh, into our natural areas is through the little tubers that it has as roots. And you can see some here, they look like almost like little potatoes. They're a tan brown color. And these can spread through any kind of soil disturbance, uh, maybe on your boots or maybe some soil disturbance uh, from equipment. Uh, another way is along streams. Uh, if there's a high water event, some of these tubes get uh, tubers get uh, washed out downstream, deposited, and grow a new plant. Um, if you want to get rid of this plant, you have a couple of options. If you have just a few plants, a small infestation, uh, you can try digging this plant out. Uh, again, try and get the whole plant, but also get those tubers too. If you leave any of those in the soil, those tubers will just regrow next year into a new plant. So you have to get that, that whole plant. Put it in a bag and put it in the trash. Don't put it on your compost or on the wood line because they will just regrow. Another option is deprive it of sunlight. You could, you could try smothering it, putting some maybe some plastic on it or some landscape fabric, leave it down and kill the plant that way. If you have larger infestations of it, you can try using a herbicide, spray the leaves with a herbicide that's safe to use around wetlands, streams, because that's where it likes to grow. It likes its feet a little bit of wet. You'll find it in wet woodlands, along stream banks, things like that. It'll even grow in ditches and in your lawn. Hello, naturalist Dottie out at Orchard Hills. And I was enjoying this beautiful wildflower area with blue cohosh, and some ramps over there, and we even saw some cutleaf toothwort, spring ephemerals that are gorgeous here. So, unfortunately, um, this place used to be all like this, and I have some history here. I've hiked here for probably 20 years or more, and I know what it used to be like. But the disturbance of the woodlands, and perhaps some of the Neighboring yards who had lesser celandine have allowed this to happen to the mature woods. And what you can see here is underneath the blue cohosh that still remains being strangled out by the lesser celandine that Joel talked about is this what used to be a beautiful wildflower area. And over a little bit further to the right and down below me in the floodplain down there, it's all lesser selenine. No wildflowers left except one or two poking out here and there. This was really, really sad to me. It's sad for the monoculture that no longer supports things like the West Virginia white butterflies and all the other animals in, that depend on the wildflowers that are here in the spring in this beautiful area. So we hope that in your neighborhoods you take care of these things because otherwise they just spread into the natural areas and take over what used to be a beautiful mature woods. Oh, by the way, when you're clearing out some of those 
lesser celandine areas or garlic mustard areas, make sure that you know what the plants are. Make sure you check with us if you don't know or check online at some of the pictures of these things because there are some things like the marsh marigolds that grow in some of our wetland areas. They're taller, bigger, bigger flowers, but if you don't know them, you could mistake them and we don't want you to take out beautiful wildflowers in the process. So thanks for being with us today and uh, we are so glad our Natural Resources Department is working hard and trying to control these invasives and we hope you help us with that too. Thanks.